Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Well, folks, uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are going to be talking pretty in depth today with Ken about YouTube. I do have a couple quick announcements that I want to make first just to get them out of the way so we have as much time and attention available to interview Ken. Um, the first thing I want to mention here is this is meant to be as interactive as possible. So by all means, please put your questions either in the chat or the Q&A. What we'll do is Jeff and I, we obviously have some questions ourselves that we've already come up with, but we will feed your questions to Ken. So please ask them as we go. Um, we'll check every five to 10 minutes and then we'll relay those over to Ken. And then the other thing is uh, typically somewhere halfway through or two thirds of the way through, um, I'll show you a slide with some sort of you know promotional information on it every single time we do one of these. I'm gonna get that out of the way right now so that we don't really have to interrupt uh, our conversation with Ken. So what I'm gonna do is I have a bunch of links, okay? And, and you've, you're probably accustomed to this if you've been on one of these before. I'm gonna go ahead and put these links into the chat right now, okay? So there's three links, I'm, I'm copying and pasting them over into the chat right now. I'll put them in the chat a couple more times throughout the conversation today, but they're there right now. There's three things. The first link is actually, let me, let me skip one slide further. The first link is an option to sign up for a tour of business video school. So tomorrow, um, and it's at 12 o'clock Pacific time, obviously 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, one o'clock Mountain. Uh, you can have an opportunity to sign up for a free tour of Business Video School. It's a chance to get in, learn what we're all about, which we're not going to be talking about outside of this quick announcement today, um, and see if it's a good fit for you. So if you're the kind of person that wants to grow your business using video, which I assume you are because you're here to, to learn from Ken today, we would really invite you to come check out our school. I want to emphasize we are rolling out our YouTube training course in about two weeks, all right? So if you wanna be learning YouTube, if you wanna go all in, today's gonna to be a great introduction. And then joining the school and taking that course um, coming up here in a week or two would be a really good idea. That's the first link. The second link is a link to our calendar. I just had a slide a second ago for that. Um, it's 119 different ideas specifically for real estate for 2021. So if you have trouble coming up with ideas for videos, if you wanna start planning your content for next year, you can go ahead and get that. And then the third link is we always share is a link to get our free video recipe, sorry, free video lessons. So if you want a whole bunch of one to three minute long video tips, little pieces of advice on how to start using video in your business, that link is there too. All right, my promotional uh, comments are out of the way. So let's get into wait, this. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Do I get that? Do I get that 104 easy video? Because like content create, that's like, that's like the key. That's the secret sauce. Right I'll there. tell you what, Ken, since you agreed to do this, I will give you a copy of that calendar for free. <laughs> Thank you. Free. Thank you. Yeah. Free. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Yeah, appreciate Sweet. it. Well, let's get into it, man, because I'm excited to talk to you today. So let me go ahead and get rid of these slides. And, and like I said, those links are going to live in the chat. I'll post them in there one or two more times throughout our conversation if you need them. But otherwise, we're talking to Ken the rest of the time. So first of all, Ken, thank you so much for joining us. I've been looking forward to this. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, so I want to, you know, we're going all in on YouTube today. So let's start with just some some basic facts for us, right? So tell us a little about um, your experience so far with YouTube as a real estate agent and kind of the impact it's had on your business. Jeff, can I hand up? Those yeah, I do. I do. I because I want to. I want to give a little bit of an intro to Ken. So okay, uh, I think it. I think some of you already probably know Ken. Obviously, he's from Orlando, Florida. I would call him. I always I have a description for everybody that I've interviewed. Uh, he is one of our YouTube savants, right? He is he is a guy who's taken YouTube used it as a almost singular strategy to explode his business. I've interviewed Ken multiple times. Now I've gotten no Ken. Uh, I follow Ken. I love his YouTube. It's one of the platforms I struggle to grow still to this day. I'm getting a little bit better at it. It is a hard platform, but it is one of the most golden platforms for growing your business and almost dialing in on a singular strategy. And I can't wait to let Ken share with you today. I can't wait to interview him obviously again. Uh, and so with that, yeah. Ken, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Man, thanks for the intro. I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm from Orlando, Florida. Uh, my wife and I, we relocated here from Detroit after running a successful team there for, uh, for like 10 years or so. And uh, so we picked it up and we said, hey, listen, Detroit's cold. Not exactly our, our, our dime, our, our thing anymore. We're going to go where it's warm. We love Disney. Let's start over in Orlando. So we did that uh, two out like this time. 2016. And uh, yeah, so struggled a little bit starting out. I was just doing everything the same. I was doing open houses, prospecting, buying Zillow, doing just everything that I knew to do, uh, you know, but then somebody said, hey, 
uh, YouTube's a big deal. Like people are always searching on YouTube. You should consider maybe doing a little of that. And so, um, so I started creating some videos and over the past two and a half years, we've built our channel up to just about 5,000 subscribers and we get a ton of business from YouTube. It's our, our biggest lead source outside of our sphere. Wow. Well, so let's get a little more specific if you're okay with it, Ken, because I think it's always love good it. to hear. If it's the biggest source of leads outside of your sphere, I mean, what are we talking at, like total percentage of business, if even just a rough number would be would be helpful to know? So we'll close over $20 million this year directly from YouTube. And that does include, uh, so we've got 70 million is our overall uh, uh, volume trajectory so far this year. Uh, and so, yeah about 20 million directly from YouTube. Um, that doesn't include like, you know, the amazing thing, and we'll dig into it today about video and you guys know this better than anybody, but you know, you do YouTube and it's amazing. Like I'll get an agent referral and they're like, Hey, you know, we were inter we were thinking about two agents. We we're going to refer in Orlando. We thought we Googled you, you came up on YouTube, you're the guy. And then they give us that agent referral. Like I'm not counting any of that in that 20 million. I'm just talking about organic search. Hey, we found you on YouTube. We want to buy, buy or sell with you. Uh, but there's so many ancillary things that YouTube helps us crush and just video in general helps us crush. And so I'm sure we'll dive into that a bit today too. Yeah, no, I love that. Cause I think that's, I mean, 20 million directly is a pretty large, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's enough to convince me to do this obviously, but mm -hmm. there are obviously addition, there's additional benefits to, to video as a communication technique in general. Right. So, um, yep. well, that's amazing. So obviously I think we want to dig into sort of how to replicate that success a little bit today. Um, so let's, let's kind of take it all the way back to the beginning though, to start off. Right. So I would assume that after your very first video, you probably weren't pulling in $20 million in, in sales right off of YouTube, right? So how long did it take to start to get that traction? Um, and let's just start there. So like when you first got started, you put out your very first video from that point until the point where you could start to say like, yeah, this is clearly paying off. This is totally worth it. Um, sort of how much effort did it take to get to that point? So, uh, so year one, uh, I was putting out like, a video every day. I was going to new home models and, and putting, you know, just, and they weren't the greatest. They were like my cell phone, you know, like going, taking tours of different model homes, putting that up on YouTube. And I was getting, you know, four views, five views. Uh, so the first year was pretty sketch. Uh, I think where our first lead took us like three or four months to get our first lead from YouTube that didn't even close. Uh, but then after month six, it was like, okay, now we're getting consistently a couple of months. And then now it's, uh, so, so anyways, year one, we closed four deals. Year two, we closed eight. And then this year, I think we'll close like 36 directly from YouTube. So, um, and they're all, and the cool thing about YouTube is, and I'm a little ADD, so I apologize for jumping around. Like the cool thing about YouTube is like, you can go into the market that you want to go in and dominate it. Like the price points, like for us, we're doing a lot more video in luxury price points because I want to do more luxury real estate. Like I don't want to sell $200,000 homes all day. Like that's great, but we would rather focus on higher end stuff. So now we've, our YouTube strategy is get into the luxury space sell higher in homes. And uh, yeah, this year we're crushing. That's awesome. Well, so let's talk about that, you know, get the sort of beginning phase again for a second, because that is, I think, where a lot of agents, they just give up, right? Because I mean, you're talking about making a video every single day for months, which is dozens and dozens of videos, which I think a lot of agents wouldn't even make dozens of videos in a whole year. So mm -hmm. what kept you with it? Like when, when you went in and say, okay, I'm gonna do something different. We're in Orlando, we're gonna try this. Um, when you did that first five or 10 or 15 or 20 videos, like, why did you keep going? Like, did you already have a strategy mapped out and sort of expectations on what to expect? Or was it just sort of a faith thing? Like you knew that YouTube would eventually pay off or sort of what kept you dedicated when you, when you weren't seeing short-term results? That's a good question. I think anything that is, you know, that you're going to do is going to take time. So whether it's like, I knew calling expired doesn't always result in a listing appointment that day. So much of it is from follow-up, right? And so I knew that if we stuck with it long enough, just like, you know, when you used to, you know, blog on um, on your on your website, right? And so you, you start blogging and you don't get any leads right away, right? It takes a long time to create this content calendar to where all of a sudden you start showing up in results. And so I knew it would take some time. I honestly didn't think it would take this long, but now it's like, literally we're at the point now we get a YouTube lead every single day and it took three years. So quantify that with anything in real estate though. Like if you're going to run a farm, how long does it take you to dominate a farm? Two, three years, right? Uh, to get going and be the agent of choice. Uh, if you're going to really crush database, like you can start building a database, but maybe you don't get referrals from that for a, a year or, or, or 18 months. Right? So I think for me, it was just the knowledge base of like, I want to create this asset that, that Zillow can't take away from me. 
by, you know, like, it, you know, I just knew that if I created this asset that created leads, eventually it would be worth it. And thankfully, you know, three years in it, it's really doing well. If I can, if I can comment on that too, that notice what he just said, like, that's the common theme. I I've said it video has a game changer for my business. It took two to three years for that to actually happen. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, any social media strategy takes time to implement. So anybody paying attention today and you want to do this, listen to what Ken said. Like it's not, you can't just start uploading videos tomorrow and your business is going to transform overnight. Like the reason most people fail at doing these things is because they don't, they don't stick it out. They don't have, they don't have the patience for it. And I want you to pay attention to what he said there because that's awesome. And Nick, we do have some questions, but I, I'm going to let them sit there for a minute because Tim, Amanda, they're good questions, but I want Ken to kind of tell us more before we kind of jump ahead with those questions. Right. Yeah. I was going to get to those in about 10 minutes or so. Um, okay. So let's start talking specifics here, Ken. So the next question I have for you is, would you repeat the same process you did when you first got started knowing what you do now? And if so, what was, you know, what exactly did those videos look like? Or would you now take a different approach if you knew what you currently know and you had to restart? What would that approach look like? Yeah. So for me, I would have, um, so what I, what I did was I, I saw other agents in other areas doing hyper local videos, like model home videos, which I think you can rank very quickly very well. But what I didn't do is look at my competition well enough to notice that they were missing, they were doing hyper local really well, but nobody was really crushing the big, like the big uh, SEO stuff, like moving to Orlando or moving to a certain city. Like they were only, there was a lot of people doing builder home tours. And so I was like, and also then agent, right? I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, they're doing it. I'll also do it, but I'll do it better. And then, you know, after time I'll rank better and get more leads. And then, so now about 18 months ago, we shifted to where I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to win on the builder model game as quickly as I could other places. So, Hey, I'm going to do, you know, top 10 things about moving to this city or five reasons why people move to Orlando or different things like that. Some bigger keywords. And so my suggestion to you guys watching is like, figure out what your competition's doing, figure out where the space is that you can fill and you can dominate. Don't just do what everybody else is already doing. Good. Yeah. I like that. So let's talk about the uh, uh, sort of making that decision, right? So when, what, you know, I, cause we can give people's obviously general, just sort of here, make this video and, and that's fine. Um, but what about the audience? Like, did you, did you have to think at all about sort of who you were trying to attract with the content um, and if so, how did you sort of decide that ahead of time in terms of who you were going to be targeting with the videos? Yeah. So like I wanted, I wanted to dominate this town called Celebration, Florida, which is where we lived at the time. And so we were already doing direct mail there. But I'm like, what, how powerful would it be if I could also have a huge pool of buyers moving here from video? So uh, we started doing a lot of videos about celebration and then also had a lot of listings there and they paired very well together. So people were calling me about my listings, but then they're like, also like, oh, I see you on YouTube, right? And they were just really played well together. So for me, I began with the end in mind, which was like, who do, who do I want calling me? And then I need to create videos that would cause these people to call me. And that's kind of become our strategy. Cool. So would you say that, uh, so you picked a specific town to focus on, obviously that comes up a lot in the, the uh, topic and sorry, the title and the description, things like that. Um, are there other ways to choose an audience on YouTube or as a real estate agent, is it always important that you focus on a particular geographic area? I think, you know, geographic area makes a lot of sense uh, because if people are relocating to your area, they want to know more information and that's why they're going to YouTube or they're going to Google and, you know, Google owns YouTube. So you show up in the Google results. Right. Uh, so for me, I don't know about a better strategy than that, uh, unless you're doing it just for, you know, we're talking on YouTube today, but if you're doing YouTube videos that also go to your sphere, right? Like we're also doing entertainment videos. So we're doing helicopter tours and pizza reviews and donut reviews and stuff like that for our database. People aren't going to be Googling that per se. Um, but, it's great content for our database and the people that find me on YouTube start going down the rabbit hole to kind of get to know me as an agent. And then they're like, not only do you know what you're talking about real estate, you seem like a pretty cool guy. We really want to work with you. And it becomes like, there's no, um, there's no interview process. It's just like, we want to work with you, right? It's not like, Hey, I went on, on Zillow, on Zillow or realtor.com and these seven agents called me and now I have to decide who I want to work with. It's like, we dove into your channel. You seem like exactly the kind of guy we want to work with and, um, and then go from there. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, what would percentage of the leads that you get from YouTube would you end up converting, do you think? Uh, we're at about 25% at this point. 
Wow. So compared to like Facebook leads, you know, about 10 times the conversion, maybe 20 times the conversion rate. So that's, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're getting um, like, and it's getting better and better. So like the quality of leads continues to go up and we're getting better at converting them. Now that I have like my team that I've built as well. That was one piece that we struggled with a little bit earlier this year was me handing off those leads because people did mm -hmm. get, they, they wanted to talk to me and work with me. And so right. creating a system behind that to where I only keep some of those leads and the majority of them now go to my team. Uh, that was a kind of a, process as well gotcha okay well let's so let's go back to sort of the strategy here so we, we talked about you know you picked celebration as, as sort of the target area that you wanted to attract people in um we talked mm -hmm. about the the sort of listing or, or walk through videos that you were creating um give us just uh, give us maybe some ideas so so we're creating these videos i mean would you would you recommend that agents that are getting started start with those home tour walkthrough videos in that city or are there other kinds of videos that are a good place to get started do you think yeah, I, again, I would go on YouTube and search. Say you're, you're, let's say you live in Atlanta and you live in Buckhead. I don't know, whatever the area is. I would go on YouTube and figure out what your competition is doing. And so if there's a ton of model home tours, don't do that. Just put in the top five reasons why people are moving into Buckhead and, and figure out if that's the reason, right? Uh, and so that's what I would do. I would figure out what your competition is not doing and fill the void. And so uh, whether it's you know moving to Atlanta, top 10 reasons why people are moving here, all those kind of things, getting a little bit more hyper, hyper local, I think is going to be important. Okay. So, so, and then you could, and then you could definitely do both. Like you could do these macro level moving to Georgia, moving to Atlanta, and then moving to this neighborhood. And then even beyond that, moving to the Williamsburg model of the Toll Brothers neighborhood in Buckhead, right? There's like all of these different pieces that you can go down with the funnel. Very cool. Okay. So we got some ideas for videos. We pick an area, we come up with these sort of topics and are focused on that particular area. Let's talk about how to build out the channel, right? So, so what is important if we're going to build a channel that's going to attract people in these, these parts of town, um, what are the things we need to consider when building that channel? Yeah. So I think you got to have a you know, broad, channel that once know, they land yeah. on there. Yeah, I think so. So I think, you know, having an attractive channel, having your banner up there, having an intro video is going to be, it's going to be important. Can create, creating playlists is going to be important as well. Like the amount of people that call me that say, you know, shoot, I found you on YouTube. I subscribed and I just start, I hit play and let it run. And then all of a sudden, like that whole player list, they're watching every video that we've ever done. Right. So I would say creating an aesthetic on your YouTube channel that looks really good, having the banner look right having the intro for new, new visitors, have that play, and then creating playlists. Those are like the three that I would start with first. Okay. So hey, Nick, I wanted to, that's a good time for, I'm, I'm watching these questions. There's one question from, from Amanda that's kind of relevant here is uh, kind of a general question. Are you just posting videos on your channel uh, as a part of this initial strategy or are you also running ads as well? So I think um, I'm all about lead with revenue. So for me, me, I, we didn't start doing anything with ads until pretty much earlier this year. And so um, for me, it was just like, I'm not going to spend a dollar on hiring an editor or a videographer until I can do it for free with my cell phone and close some deals. And then after that, start spending. So I think ads is the same thing, right? Right. Like if you, unless you already have the budget somewhere else and you're able to, um, then fine. But for me, I'm always leading with revenue. And then so for us, it was the, the category or the, the way that this went was it was me and, and my, my laptop editing at night, posting a, a video a day uh, until, you know, month eight or nine where I had a closing. And after that, I hired an editor. And so I'm just out shooting and I had somebody else editing the video for me. And then now I have somebody that does it all for me. I just show up with this, you know, with the ideas and he does it all for me. Right. So, um, and then we also put some ads behind that now that we have some success. So, and several people have asked the name of your channel. It's it's his name. So you can see it here on the screen, Ken Pozek. If you type that in uh, to the search bar and YouTube, he's the only Ken Pozek that comes up. Super helpful. Yeah, that definitely helps, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, so let me let me uh, come back to that, Ken, because that, that, that approach, I think, is pretty smart. So the idea of kind of leading with revenue and, and making sure you're making money before you're spending it, which is a great business strategy, would you recommend that for any agent, they take that same approach? So, so let's say somebody has the, the budget, they could go out and hire a videographer day one. Would you still recommend that they start by doing it all themselves so that they learn it? Or is that a part of the process you could skip potentially? 
Personally, I would, I would go do it yourself. You know, if you have the wherewithal to figure out how to edit and get it done, and it's really not that hard. Like if you have an iPhone and you can use it, you can use iMovie and figure it out. It gets, I'm not that savvy and you can figure it out. Uh, and so for me, I think understanding what hits and what doesn't, because here's the other thing is you could go out and do a ton of videos that don't get any traction. And if you spent a bunch of money on that and you blew your budget, well, now you're done with video. But for me, I had the luxury of like trying different stuff out until I figured out what worked in our area. And then I leaned harder in that. And then I put some money behind it after that. And now we're, you know, taking off. Very cool. Okay. And actually we had a question that, that sort of fits in with that a little bit. So back to talking about kind of keywords and how to design your videos to, to perform well, since we're basically talking about search engine optimization when it comes to YouTube. Um, the mm -hmm. question was, do you, do you find the keywords first and then design your videos around the keywords you want to rank for, or do you basically create a piece of content and then try to associate keywords with it that match it? What would be the better approach? So I think it's depending on what area you're going to, right? So if you're going to do like model home tours, right? You're not really doing much keyword search behind that. You're just going to go to the model home tours and the cities that are popular. And then you're going to create your titles and your thumbnails around that. But now that's what we do. Like we have, a, we already, my videographer and I, we have the next 30 videos that we're going to shoot already on our calendar. And it's around the keyword cert research that we've done. And so it's like, Hey, I know we're, we're at, you know, we're hitting really well with these videos. We're going to do a repeater video because, you know, six months later, I know this video is hitting. Now they're going to play really well off each other. So that's one thing. But for us, um, I guess, defining what your strategy is, if you're going to do these model home tours, you don't really need to do much keyword search. But if you're going to go more macro, then yeah, you need to focus in on keywords, what people are already searching. Hey, Ken, do you use on that, on that topic, do you use any uh, tools like keywords everywhere through Google? Uh, which, yep. by the way, if you don't know what that is, uh, audience, and you're looking for keywords or long tail keywords, type in keywords everywhere into Google. You can download it to be, uh, what, what do you call it, um, built into your Google Chrome, an extension. And then you can basically pay for credits and it's going to give you, I'll let, Ken, I'll let you explain it because you use it too. Go ahead. Yeah, so you can figure, pretty much figure, you could start typing very similar. I mean, it's a little bit more in depth, but you can type in a, a keyword and it's going to give you all the other searches that kind of go along with it or other tags that are also used in association with those keywords. And so for us, uh, it, it doesn't give you like how much, how much search traffic it is, but keywords anywhere. Uh, it says, Hey, if you were going to pay for an ad, this is kind of what it, it should cost you. And because of how those rank, you're able to figure out which ones have more traffic than others. And so it's a really helpful tool, but you can also just start using, like, if you don't want to pay for any of this, go to google.com and start typing in your city and whatever Google finishes off your, you know, you're starting with, that's a good keyword to go after because that's what other people are searching. You can also use Google trends is another really good one that we've started diving into. Uh, those are two that I would take a look at that are free. Cool. Love it. What, what is your favorite tool? Even if it's paid, do you have sort of uh, that the, the, key, the keywords everywhere tool is probably our favorite. Keywords That's everywhere. the one my video. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Keywords everywhere. If, if Nick, if you don't mind, I, we've got tons of questions flowing through. Yeah. Let me, let me start going into this. I think you've already answered this, but I'm gonna let you touch on it one more time. Cause it's, it's, it's a, it's a high level or a simple question. Do you have a videographer editor? Or do you recommend one? Yeah, so I, I have an editor now, like a videographer and editor locally. We go out every Thursday now. It was every other Thursday. Now we're doing it every single Thursday. Uh, we shoot content. And so, but before that, I used Upwork to find an editor. I just said, hey, send me, here's the job description. I went on Upwork. I said, hey, I've got two or three videos I want to shoot every single week. They're three to five minutes long. I need you to cut out my ums. I need you to put an intro, outro, and bottom thirds. How much will you charge me? And I had a hundred people willing to, to do it. And so on average, I was paying like 50 to 60 bucks uh, to have somebody edit my video. And um, yeah, there's a whole process to kind of vetting your editor, but that's what I did first. What editing software are you using? Uh, so my guy uses Adobe Premiere. Um, but again, I started off using uh, iMovie. Awesome. Jeff, real quick, I'm going to put a link uh, in the chat. We actually, through Business Video School, we do have a partnership with uh, Connect Video for a really affordable editing called Easy Edits that start at 50 bucks. So I'm going to go ahead and put that link in the chat right now. If you're looking uh, for editing, we recommend them. But obviously, as Ken mentioned, there's a lot of videographers Brilliant. out there. There's, there's plenty, of com plenty of people competing to, to offer the service to you. So Awesome. Yep. Um, another basic question. What, and we, a couple of people asked this, how long are your videos or what length do you find is the best length for YouTube? So our average video is five minutes long. Uh, we're pushing that 
more and more because YouTube is going to give you props. They're going to give you uh, more juice if you, the longer you can keep somebody on on YouTube. And so for us, it's like uh, I, I noticed that I could get a 75% watch time, which is really long on a five minute video. And the longer videos were, were people were dropping off at 50%. And so for us, I'm just constantly trying to keep attention. And so the, the, the short answer for that is, as long as you can hold people's attention, do as long as you can of a video. Uh, but if you're doing a, a one minute video and people are watching the whole thing, that's not really gonna do well for you in terms of ranking and search. And so for us, it's how do we create longer videos that I can keep, keep, keep people's engagement with? And that's kind of like the sweet spot. So for us, it's been about five minutes and we're doing everything we can to start pushing that up even more. Love it. Do you, do you recommend someone choosing the name of their channel, be their name uh, or the name of their geo farm area? So for me, like, you know, we branded the team and we, everything we do around my name, uh, cause it's unique. Um, like my last name is unique, but, um, if you want to do a moving to Dallas, you know, or something like that, I think that's fine. Uh, but again, I think this is such a people business and such a personality business that for, for me, um, I think people want to get to know you. And so, uh, if you want them to call and really be attached to you, then use your name. And I personally, I think that that's work works best. There's other agents that disagree and they do their own thing. I, well, and I agree with you, Ken. And in fact, if you can have the same name, your name as the name of every social media channel that you're on, it makes you so easy to find. And that's the name of the game. Uh, so keep that in mind on that topic of geo uh, geo farming, geo areas. Are you able to explain, I don't think we can show this, but are you able to explain how you go to YouTube to be in front of a specific area or farm? Yeah. So I think part of that is, um, so you're talking about ads or just how I create our videos? Um, I th it didn't specify in the question. I think, I think in this case, if you're going to target an area or a farm, you probably got to run an ad, correct? Yeah. Or use our keyword or keyword strategy, right? Yeah, I think keyword strategy, again, it's free. And so start there. But like for, for us, like, again, I want to dominate all of the traffic inbound for Celebration Florida. So if you're my competition out there, you've got a lot of work to do. But um, so listen, um, for us, it's like, okay, so... Uh, Second home in Celebration, Florida. We do a video on that. Top eight reasons why to move to Celebration, Florida. We do that. Uh, five things you might not know about Celebration, Florida. The dark history of Celebration, Florida, right? So anytime somebody's searching any of those things, I should be popping up in the top two or three uh, videos. And so for that, I own the geospace or the, the, the keywords for that. And so anybody looking to move into the area, that becomes a powerful thing. I love it. Somebody, somebody actually commented on the uh, Faith Faith Hill. Uh, the Faith Hill is on this webinar right now. Hey, Faith uh, Hill. Just kidding. But she said, good point. She's like, but what if I have a commoner's celebrity name? I I'm curious to hear what your response is to this. My answer, Faith, is use it to your advantage, uh, but probably put Faith Hill Realtor, Faith Hill Realtor, whatever city you're in. You know what I mean? But use the Faith Hill because you're going to accidentally get found. And I would totally use that to my advantage. Yeah, I totally agree. And people are going to do a double take, like, Faith Hill, what? And like, oh, and then, oh, God, it, she's a realtor. That's cool. Right. I agree. I agree. I love it. Love it. Um, Nick, if you don't mind, I'm just going to keep firing away on these questions unless you want to jump in. But there's still well, so plenty more to me, go through. Let me add this one just because this is related to a couple that we've already asked. So we're talking about, the, you know, picking the name for the channel, Ken, but I want to ask you something about sort of the theme of the channel. And, you know, one of the things that I've understood about YouTube is you got to be a little bit careful about having uh, videos that are about topics that are too different, right? Because if somebody shows up on your channel looking for one thing and all of a sudden they're, they're seeing stuff that has nothing to do with it. So an example would be like if you're an agent and you're really into you know, sports and you want to talk about sports, you may want to have a separate channel for that so that people that have an interest can, can sort of arrive in the right place. I mean, what do you think about that? And then within the context of the channel, like how far out can you go in terms of the topics of your videos? I love this topic. So I think that, um, you have to respect your subscriber and your subscribe and, and respect your viewer. And so they came here and they subscribed to your channel for one reason. And if you don't think that it fits in that same box in general, then do another channel. But if you're a sports fan in DC and you want to talk about real estate history and the nationals, 
I think all that plays on the same channel, right? Because you want to be like, like, so for me, like you guys can tell, like I'm kind of into like Star Wars and Marvel and all types of kind of stuff. And so for us, like we do, we do video tours of, of new rides at Disney. We talk a lot about Disney because Disney's in our backyard. There's, you know, Orlando and Disney kind of go together. And so for us, like we're talking about those two things all the time. And so, you know, funny enough, I get a lot of people that love Disney that also want me to represent them as a buyer or seller agent. And so I think that um, showing some of your personality totally plays. Uh, but yeah, I think that as long as you're respecting the subscriber, uh, keep that in mind first, then you're going to do okay. Take advantage of playlist people. Uh, we talk about, uh, we've talked about Kyle Whistle and East County Eats, which he's, you know, I can, I know you probably know Kyle. Um, he's an OG uh, for using YouTube. And, and if you ever follow his channel, it's called East County Eats. He's got two playlists all about real estate. I, I mean, he draws them there with the food and then he lets people know what he does. There's nothing wrong with that. That's kind of the name of the game. So I think, I hope that helps uh, kind of add to that as well. And I'm glad you have the same answer again, because clearly that's what works. Cool. Yeah, you, sorry, I didn't want to cut off ask, answering the rest of the questions, Jeff, so we can go back to that. I love it. Yeah. So uh, a starter agent wants to know, I, I know the answer to this. I want you to answer it. Uh, should they focus on content videos or should they go right into ads? I mean, I think content videos first and then, and then put some money behind it after you get your first closing. And to add to that, bring value, just bring value. Think about what are people searching? And that's what you should FAQs frequently asked questions create content around that kind of stuff. Uh, go follow Ken, go stalk the hell out of them. And see you, you, there's a playbook right there for you. So, um, yeah. so a quick follow up what, on what? that. Go ahead, Ken, sorry. No, you go ahead. Well, I was gonna ask to follow up on that. When, when you do end up running ads, should you just be running ads on like your top performing videos? Or I know you said you, you have started running ads at this point. Are you running the same videos you're just posting or do you have more of a strategy beyond that? So I only post I only post ads on two of my videos, um, just from a, a budgeting standpoint, um, because and I don't want to run ads on every single one. I want to try to get organically found as much as possible. But like my top things, you, my top ten things you didn't know about Celebration Florida. I've been running ads on that one for like a little over a year. We've got 150,000 views on that. Um, I only do discovery ads, and so for you guys nerding out a little bit on the ad side you know there's a lot of different youtube ads that you can run there's the skippable ads so like when somebody starts watching a video and yours is is in there first if you don't have a super compelling video right off the bat they're just going to skip by and and you're really not going to get any juice for us we do discovery ads down at the bottom so anytime anybody types one of my keywords, we are a, a discovered video at the bottom where they say, hey, you watch this video, you might also like this one, and I pay to be in that spot. And so um, those are the ads and our strategy. Are you getting mainly buyers from your YouTube strategy or are you also getting listings? So we're getting mostly buyer leads, um, but what we have found is that 30% of our buyers, if they live here, also have something to sell. So that's been really great. Um, and then again, we farm like physically mail our farm as well. And so, so many of them are like, Hey, I've been getting your postcards forever. And I've then found it on YouTube and we have a home to sell. So we get that a lot too. I love it. Are you, uh, do you find that your ads hurt your watch time or your other stats uh, as a result? Um, when I was doing skippable ads before I figured out what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, and then now that we're switched to the discoverable, no, it's been fantastic. Love it. Uh, let me go back to Tim. Poor Tim. You've been waiting for so long. I hope you're still here. Um, how do Today. I prom how do I promote a live stream that I just started doing on YouTube? And he says via he it's via my mortgage classroom channel. That's what he, that's what what his channel is called. So how does he promote a live stream, or how would you promote a live stream? Dude, I have not got into that. You you and Tristan, I think have. So if you have some gems, drop them. Uh, Nick, I'm gonna let you take that one if you have an answer to that. Um, well, when you say promote a live stream, I would assume you mean promoting it ahead of time. So people will actually show up on the live stream. Cause obviously you could promote it afterwards. Cause at that point it's a recorded video. Um, you know, I think that it, it's just like, I mean, you have to treat your live stream like an event, right? So then anything you would do to promote an event is the same thing you would do to promote a live stream. In fact, I would encourage you to associate an online event with it, right? So you can actually collect RSVPs. You can remind people, um, so that would be my approach. If it's on YouTube, you maybe use like Eventbrite or something like that. I mean, obviously I do a lot of Facebook live. So using like a Facebook event is an easy thing to do there. 
Um, but then you just promote it, right? So, you know, make, make tiny little short pieces of video content that are sort of teasers for what you're going to do during the live stream. Um, you know, give people, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like an event. You just, you tease them about what they're going to get when they actually show up, but you don't give them everything. So that it sort of sparks curiosity. Um, and if you have a way for them to RSVP, that's ideal because you're, you're even going to potentially get their contact information ahead of time. So you sort of have that lead gen component to it. Um, but that's it. I mean, once, once you're live, there's not, there's not much else you can do at that point. Um, and the last thing I'll say is when it comes to live video, your reputation is what's going to increase the number of actual live viewers. So just do lots of them, get used to doing it, work on your compelling, you know, you got to be super compelling on camera during a live video. So work on that stuff. And then as you start to be known for being worth watching, you're going to have more people show up live. And then that shows the algorithm, Hey, this is actually a good video and it should show it to more people. Um, but that does take time. Live streaming is it's, it's hard, <laughs> but yeah, it can be really, it can be fun. And I, the one thing I'll say about live video for everybody is the thing I love about live video, which this is an example of is that once you start making it, it's done, right? Like it's going to get posted. It's going to be out there. You're not going to worry about, you know, uploading it. You're not gonna be able to second guess yourself. Um, so from that standpoint, I love it because you just hit record, you hit live and then it's out there and it's, and it's done. Right. So that is one sort of positive aspect to it. So hopefully that answers your question. If not, you know, ask us a follow-up. That's good. There's no limit on how you can promote either text, email. Right. Sure. Uh, I mean, there's so many different ways you could do it. I, I agree. But I will say this too about that when it comes to doing live, especially when it's Facebook, Instagram, and those things don't get so caught up in the live audience. You're basically just creating a video. You're playing the algorithm game, but you're going to get most of your views after the fact. So don't get caught up or get beat down because you don't have a ton of people on live. Like Nick said, it takes time. It takes right. it takes experience and it takes being good, putting out good content. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's let's jump back to a question here. How would you target the video when you don't live in the big city? We're located about 45 minutes north of Boston and we don't service the actual Boston market. Nobody searches YouTube for... I want to live in Georgetown, Mass, population 8,000. Are you sure? I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is it because if I can't afford Boston and I, I don't have a million dollar budget to buy a two bedroom condo, uh, am I going to look around the area and then I'm just going to be curious, like, what's Georgetown look like? What, and, you know, so if you're the freaking digital mayor of Georgetown and you keep showing up everywhere, they're going to call you. And I think that's an actually way easier keyword to, to rank for than Boston. So I would go dominate it. I mean, Celebration Florida is kind of well-known if you like Disney, but if not, I would be Orlando, right? Yeah. But because it's uh, something that I'm going after and I want to be the digital mayor, then we do videos there. So I, I wouldn't shy away. I couldn't, I just want to second that. I 100% agree. But also use keywords like affordable housing in Boston, affordable housing around Boston. Use that kind of keyword, long phrase type type um, keywords. But I, I agree with Ken. Go after it. Dominate Georgetown. Dominate the areas around it. You'd be surprised. Uh, there's other people doing just that. Well, there's a lot less competition, mm -hmm. I would assume, too. So, I mean, there's 100%. a good chance you'll be able to get results quicker, you know, maybe not the, the same potential in terms of long term results, but short term, you might actually see results faster. And think about it this way, like you might not get 10,000 subscribers for people that want to move to Georgetown, right? But the quality of leads that you're going to get is going to be pretty fantastic. Yeah. So because if somebody, if I'm moving to the area and I'm looking for a realtor and you win me over, you're my guy, right? So I would do, if I'm you, you know, if you don't service the Boston area, well, maybe you should get some agents that also help you service the Boston area. Um, but yeah, I would, I would dive in and be the Georgetown guy. Yeah. Vanity doesn't always make money. I think is the, is the short way to say this. It doesn't necessarily matter how many subs you have if you're if you're if you're converting leads. That's what matters. Uh, Linda has a, Linda has a good question. Are you cross posting your videos for your content to other social media outlets? So we just started doing this. Um, our, my videographer just changed the last because it used to say subscribe, and we had this whole like outro and all this other kind of stuff on our videos. Now he's changed it to where uh, yeah, we, we do two separate videos at the end. So one is like you know like our Facebook page, blah 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 blah, and the other one is subscribe to our channel. Love it. Uh, here's a different question. As for a strategy, if you were part of a large team across a state, would you combine hyper local and broader videos from various team members? Or is it better to have one brand ambassador? Nick, what do you think? What do I think? Um, mm -hmm. I pers I'm a big fan of everybody having their own brand because I think that, you know, and make sure I'm answering the question correctly here, but I think that, you know, 
I think when you have a team, it's always tempting to kind of focus on like, it's the team and it's our brand. And if I help all these agents build their own personal brand, they're going to leave. But I actually think the more you help them build the personal brand, the more likely they are to stay with you because you're, you're giving them that additional value and service. So I just think that with the worth where we're at with social media, I mean, it's so easy to build relationships with people. Um, but you want to build a relationship with a person, right? So you're seeing even big companies are trying to act more like individual people now. So I personally think that it's, it's a good thing to build brands for everybody. And then you can almost sort of have digital mirrors in a bunch of different parts of town, so to speak. Um, but I can see why people might be reluctant and want to focus more on, on the bigger team brand. So that would be my, my take on it. Yeah, I think if you become the leverage for your teammates to grow, build, you know, grow their channel, and you've got one person who's the point of content of uploading and doing all this other stuff, like I, for me, people come to my channel because they want to know about Orlando or they want to know about homes near Disney. They don't want to hear about stuff in Tampa and Miami. They don't. And so um, I agree. I think that you create separate channels. It makes more sense to me. I was going to ask, what about creating one channel built around the brand, the team brand? I'm assuming I'm talking to the team leader. Uh, if mm -hmm. that's the case, do you then create playlists within the big brand? Let's just say it's Ken Pozek and then Ken Pozek uh, operates in, you have a team in St. Pete, you have a team in Orlando, you have a team in West Palm beach. Do you then create playlists for each one or do you create separate channels for each one? What would you do? I would create separate channels for each one personally. There's, there's the answer. There's the answer I think he was looking for right there. Okay, cool. Uh, do you have any suggestions for increasing the number of people who see your videos and subscribe, subscribe to your channel? That's a great question. I think, you know, it's, it's playing the YouTube algorithm. So posting consistently and then asking for the subscriber, believe it or not, like we started doing that just a year and a half or a year ago. There's like, even just asking for the subscribe for, Hey, you watch this video. If you got any value about it, please hit the subscribe button doing that. We went from like 1,600 to 5,000 subscribers this year. And so, um, you know, I, I don't think it's hard. I think it's asking for it, posting consistently, and, and then you'll continue to grow. What do you think, uh, Kanks? I've heard, you know, uh, bad things in some cases about this. What do you think about sort of trying to drive your followers from other social platforms over to subscribe to your YouTube channel? Is that a, a good thing to do or is that something to avoid? So I think like, so for me, I stopped posting my YouTube channel in my Facebook feed because unless it's like a really compelling video that I think is fun to watch or something like that. But if you, you're teaching YouTube who to give your content to. And so if you have a bunch of people coming from all over the place, they're popping in, watching 20 seconds of your video and popping out, or they're subscribing, but they're never going to come back because they don't really care what you do. Uh, that's not good for you. Like that, that tells YouTube that you're not a good person to push. And so like today, if you guys are watching this, feel free to check out my YouTube channel. But if you're not interested in Orlando and luxury homes at Disney, don't subscribe. <laughs> it doesn't help me. Uh, but if you want to come back and see what we're doing and you want to be a fan that way, then please do. Uh, but keep that in mind. That'll help you make some good decisions. I think I, I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it because somebody asked, are you tagging all your videos with keywords? Yep, absolutely. Uh, are you specifically, are you leaning keywords or key phrases? Key phrases. That's, that's important to know, folks. Again, remember, what is someone going to type into Google? That's what you want to use as your key phrases. Um, how, so we had the question about a small town. How would you approach getting traction in a major city of 3 million? So a bigger city. Uh, how would you approach getting traction? Would you go to a micro, would you focus on a micro area or would you focus on content around the entire city? Yeah, so that's like what we've done. So Orlando is huge, you know, you've got a million plus people that live in the city, but then there's all these, you know, suburbs that are considered Orlando as well. And so we started micro level and can continue to broaden. So now we do a little bit of, of both. If you look at our cadence when we're posting, it's like, you know, luxury home in this city, uh, or this little town, and then it's moving to Orlando. And then it's, you know, it's like, you know, macro, we're constantly kind of balancing the macro and micro keywords. Love it. Love it. That's excellent. Uh, what are your thoughts on Rumble? Don't know what it is. Good answer. Easy enough. Nick, do you know what Rumble is? I do not, no. Sounds uh, like a dating app. It does, yeah. <laughs> uh, something about a, it's a rights management video platform. Host, distribute, monetize all your professional social and viral video. None of us have any experience with it. So, uh, Nancy, I'm sorry, we can't help you with that one. Yeah. Um, right. We're not, we are not all knowing, apparently. Uh, what are you spending on average, uh, for your ads? Uh, I have a budget of $300 a month now. I run 150 bucks per video and that's it. 150 tops. It's good to know. Awesome. 
Okay, so uh, Tiffany's got a, a bunch of comments here. Um, she specializes in rural properties, but if I do a keyword search for living in the country or buying rural properties, does that basically, she's saying there's not, not to clarify, she says not much comes up in keywords everywhere for the above searches. Does that mean there's opportunity or not a need? You said there's not much that comes up. I mean, so it, it's like moving to Georgetown outside of Boston, or is it Georgetown? Am I saying that yeah, right? That's what they said. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I think it's a it's a niche keyword that does just because there's not a lot of traffic doesn't mean that there's not people going after that. Um, I think that you could probably broaden it a little bit. Uh, wouldn't you agree, Jeff and Nick? You could probably broaden it, but there's still some traffic. If there's not a lot of people going there, just understand you're not going to have a thousand views on your video and tons of calls, but the ones that do call are going to be quality. It goes back to the vanity. Uh, yeah, again, what do you want? A million views or five views and two sales? What do you want? That's what you have to kind of decide. Uh, Nancy, by the way, says Rumble is an alternate to YouTube. Nancy, none of us quote unquote video guys have heard of it. So I'm going to say not relevant, but that's just my opinion. I don't know if you guys have a comment on that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't accidentally stumbled on Rumble, right? So I haven't been like Googling something and they take me to Rumble. And so I would say that I'm on the internet all the time. And if I haven't accidentally stumbled upon it now, I'm guessing that other people have not either. Yeah. I would, yeah. I mean, the one thing, a lot of those types of things that come up, because there's like Wistia, Vimeo, there's a lot of places to store and host your videos and they all sort of have different advantages to use them. But the one thing they don't have is they don't have a massive 2 billion user platform built into them. And so that's where, you know, there might be features on some other platforms that are exciting or interesting, but you're not going to have the audience, right? There's just no way. There's only a few platforms in the whole world that have the, the kind of audience that's worth sort of pursuing. And generally, if you can stay on those platforms, it's a good idea. Um, one last thing I must uh, say real quick, and then Jeff can get back to a couple more questions. Since all of you here do want to learn about video, and it's something that you would probably come back to our channel, I'm going to share our channel in the chat. Um, and I do want you to subscribe because I assume you're going to want to continue to see videos about how to make more videos for your business. So um, we have all a pretty right. new YouTube channel. We're still getting up and running. So we might be able to cross 100 subscribers as of right now, though, because we're getting pretty close. So if we get a few of you to subscribe, um, that would be awesome. So I figured, you know, I, I got to do a quick plug for our channel. Here. I love it. Um, but yeah, Jeff, let's get back to it. We got a couple cool. more minutes for questions. Let's got it. So, so I think we've kind of touched on this, but I want you, I'm going to ask it again with the knowledge you have now, if you had to start all over again, what would be the first type of videos you would focus on creating first to start getting leads? That's very important to get leads. If I had to start over again, what kind of video channel would I start in order to get leads? Um, what again, type I would go of videos? No, what type of videos? Do oh, oh. Sorry. What type of videos? Um, so if you have new construction in your area, that's a huge one. Like that's a slam dunk. Um, if not, it's going to be uh, pros and cons videos of moving to your area are the videos that I would lean into because those are, those two, that's are gold. That's really good. Awesome. Um, do you ever do your own shoots or are you all videographer now? I'm all videographer now. Awesome. And, and it doesn't necessarily, the answer to that question is uh, do what you can with, with the means that you have. Uh, you can be very successful. Uh, I know people doing their own shoots. All, all of their content on YouTube is personal stuff. Uh, so it's yeah. very possible. Um, it's really more of a, le it's really more of a leverage tool than anything. I mean, that's the thing. Like I, I'm actually fairly good. I've got, you know, really good cameras. Like I'm, I'm good to go if I want to, but it's a leverage piece. It saves me a ton of time and it looks good but believe it or not the video that i get the most leads from which again this is what matters not the vanity it's the leads are the videos that i shot with my iphone and they're like hey you know you shot this video three years ago it's the one with the most views all that kind of thing uh it cost me nothing to shoot that video and so keep that in mind yeah i agree uh, amanda i'm gonna answer your question by telling you that i think the best way to figure out how to customize your youtube web address is probably just google it i don't know if ken if you can easily explain that i've done it but i've also searched it on google i don't know if either one of you nick or ken can explain that otherwise googling might be the best answer yeah i think it's just, you're trying to switch it to a brand account and so if Correct. you have after the fact um i think you have to have a certain amount of subscribers i think it's 100 then you're allowed to switch it to where like ours is youtube.com slash Ken Posick TV. Yeah, it, it is. It's a little technical and there's some description, you know, there's some instructions on how you can do it though, man. It's, it's not yeah. super difficult, but it would probably help. Um, let's see here. Uh, with, do we have, okay. So, so Tiffany also wants to ask, so she's brought up the other social platforms. We've been hearing about parlor lately. Um, and I was going to say that when, when somebody said rumble is, is YouTube, no one's ever touching YouTube, 
just like no one's ever touching Facebook, not, not in any time soon. So if you go down that rabbit hole of parlor or rumble, you're doing it probably you're not going to gain much in business. Uh, you're probably wasting your time. It's probably what TikTok was two years ago. Now, TikTok's actually made a real impact. Uh, I'd give these platforms time. Otherwise, I think you're wasting your time. I, don't th I think there'll be a shiny object on the wall that will fade fast, if I had to guess. Just my opinion. Um, let's see here. I'm based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but work well over Metro Detroit. And I'm struggling with choosing the best name for my channel that will cover both areas. Any suggestions? Steve, what's up, man? So I'm actually from that area, obviously. And I have thought quite a bit about if I was to ever move back. I'm not. But if I ever was to move back, where would I base my channel? Make it about you. Make it Steve Wicklin. And you also do videos in Ann Arbor and Detroit. So like I lived right in the middle when I lived there. And so I would have to decide which one I want. But I would go right in the middle and start doing videos about moving to Detroit, moving to Ann Arbor, and you're just constantly, you're just the realtor that's in Southeast Michigan and go crush it. Ooh, somebody asked about shortening your YouTube videos and cross posting them to TikTok, which it gives up perfect opportunity. YouTube shorts. Ken, are you going to use it? What is it? 100% once apparently I get access to it. Tristan got access. I'm texting. I'm like, bro, how did you get the access before? I've got a bigger, more subscribers. I don't know, but um, you, if you know and see more about it, I would, but yeah, definitely it, as social becomes more and more important, YouTube's going to this play where they're trying to get more eyeballs to stay on, on more of the social aspect. So YouTube shorts, you've got these videos are much like stories. And so, yeah, we're a hundred percent going to go in there as soon as my app turns on to where it allows me because not everybody has access to it yet, which is, I don't get it. Love it. Love it. Um, Diane asked, where do you find the pros and cons about an area? I, you have an answer for that? I mean, you know what they are already. Like, it's like, hey, if somebody wanted to move towards A city versus B, why would they choose one or the other? And so for us, it's like, you know, is it, you know, schools or jobs or proximity, price point, shopping, food? There's so many. Just make them up. You, you, you're the content creator. You get to create whatever you like. Know your market. Know what people are searching, right? Yeah. Um, Amy's had a good question and I was going to ask this earlier. I wasn't sure if it was relevant. Um, when you said that your uh, viewers, a lot of times they want to work with you. How do you pass that off? How do you kind of script your way out of that to, you know, for lack of a better term, I'm going to pass you down to someone else. How do you handle that? Yeah. So I think it's passing them up. It's, it's creating a, a uh, creating a script that passes them up. And so here's how I do that. Uh, so for me, I ask, oh, cool. So what area of town are you looking to move to? Oh, I want to move to the villages and we've always wanted to live out that way. Oh, no kidding. So I actually, I sell there, but you know who you really want is Bree on my team. She freaking crushes it out there. She's got three active listings. She sold a half dozen houses there in the past month. Uh, she's a really good agent. Can I send you her contact information or better yet? When would be a better time for have her reach out? And then I set the appointment for her and it's a done deal. And so for us, think about it for, for me as a team leader. Now I have a very, I've got an asset for my team that can help me grow my team because I'm handing off warm leads. It's way, you know, would you, as a team buyer's agent, would you rather have a Zillow lead that is also getting called by three other agents? Or would you rather have somebody that said, Hey, I want to work with you. And I set an appointment for you. That's an amazing piece place to be as a team leader. So that's how I do it. We've also started shooting content with my team members. Uh, we're bringing them into some of the videos and we've also done some Q and A's with them. So I can actually send off a text or an email. That's an intro of like, Hey, by the way, here's Geo's intro video, his reviews and why I think he's a freaking awesome agent. And I see, see him on there. When can Geo reach out? Um, all of those things are a way that I just pump the heck out of my team to make them look like rock stars and to get better conversion. Love it. Love it. Uh, quick, a quick, there was a question about your conversion of 25%. That is conversion of business, right? Not yeah, like subscribers, closings. video views. Correct. Closings. Good question. Good question. Uh, Harry did confirm it's a hundred subs to have a unique name, a vanity name, as he calls it. Uh, and then the last question, we're going to wrap this up. This has been incredible engagement. Thank you everyone for being on today. Uh, a non real estate video suggestion that seems to drive people to the channel like food. What do you think about pets or animals? Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, not, not everybody's going to be a dog person or a cat person or whatever it is, but it's, it's more content that's engaging. And, and again, if you want to be, you know, if you want to get more of those people, they're going to like and know and trust you even more. If you have a dog and they have a dog, right. It's that whole, like, 
that whole piece of when you're going on a listing presentation and you see somebody plays music, oh, I play music, right? Uh, just know that it's not going to be for everybody. So you have to do a little bit of everything in order to, to lean in. Would you say that it's important to be consistent? So if you're going to go in on dogs or your dog, be consistent. Yeah, you're walking your dog while you're doing the video and you're you know talking about how amazing this neighborhood is or hey listen there's dog parks all over here and listen I know a lot of my subscribers are dog people and so the groomers come to this neighborhood on Tuesdays it's freaking awesome. If you're that guy then lean in and, and create a ton of content that way. Love it. Any cool. parting thoughts Ken? This has been fantastic. Uh, I think the biggest piece is, you know, what we talked about early on, which is just consistency. You know, you can't start something and then give up when you don't get immediate success. So if you're going to do it, uh, know that you're not going to be great up front. Uh, like I was I, my first 30 or 40 videos, I've already deleted off my channel because they were that bad. Uh, and so um, just understand that nobody's super good when they get going. And the more you do it, the better you get. So just commit to doing a video a week, two videos a week, whatever it is, um, and, and then go and then understand that it's a long play when you, when you commit to it, it's a huge, huge thing. It's a game changer. I love it. I love it. For all of you needing help with creating these videos, don't forget what Nick shared. There's tons say, of links. Yeah. Jeff, go ahead. Let me, I got a note from the boss. I got to make a quick announcement here. So uh, I didn't have the, the date, but I do now. The course on YouTube, which we're calling Creating and Building Your YouTube Channel, starts on November 18th. So I think that's actually a week from today. Uh, we're going to be covering strategy, YouTube studio, optimizing your video, thumbnails, descriptions, all that, promoting your channel, pretty much everything you need to get up and running. So there's a link in the chat, the last link that I shared. I'll share it one final time here. Um, that's to sign up for a tour of business video school and get an inside sort of peek at what we're doing, ask your questions and see if we're a good fit. So please click that link and get registered to join us tomorrow. Ken, Steve said in Michigan that if he's ever bailing on Michigan, he's looking you up and he's going to come work for you. All right, come on down, buddy. <laughs> Ken, we appreciate you, man. Thank you guys for being on today. This has been a fantastic, one of the most engaging webinars we've ever done. Uh, this sure. was awesome. So thank you so much, Ken. Thank you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. See you, brother.